Yes, right, enough of that already. Thank you for joining me once again, where people continue to be wrong on the interwebs. They continue to be recidivist defenders. They continue to be lame Norton, who not only doesn't understand first principles of physics, doesn't understand the laws of conservation, doesn't understand or even know what the laws of thermodynamics say and don't say, but also today he wants to show us that he also does not understand exercise physiology. Nonetheless, he thinks himself competent to speak about exercise physiology, so we'll have to put him right where he's wrong. So let's do that, shall we? Uh, Lame, tell us, tell us all about it, mate. Tell us all about your uh, your ideas on exercise physiology and carbohydrates, though, or something. Right, um, off you go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your mom's favorite show. That's no, it isn't. That's right. What the fitness? And also, lame at, at your level. I, I know I should be careful about casting aspersions about audio quality, but seriously, son, at your level, you should probably pay someone to get this right for you. Okay, your your master is too high and it's clipping. This week, oh, this sucks. We have Michael Chandler on the show, UFC lightweight competitor. I actually am a big fan of Michael Chandler. I think he's an absolute savage. And before I go into debunking the nonsense he spouts about diet and nutrition, I just... Actually, the person that's here to do the debunking of nonsense today, Lame, is me. And it's debunking of your nonsense that I'm going to be doing. So buckle up, buttercup. I want to say yes to everyone in the comments. I'm aware that he would completely kill me and eviscerate me and do whatever he wanted to me in a physical altercation. But when it comes to science, I'm a fucking ninja. No, you are not, Lamb Norton. You are a boy in short pants when it comes to science. You are an absolute buffoon when it comes to science. You don't understand the first principles of physics. You don't understand the laws of conservation. You don't understand the laws of thermodynamics or even what they say, let alone how to actually appropriately apply them or not, as the case may be. Uh, and on top of that, you're also going to prove in this video that you don't understand exercise physiology either. Good. Keep talking though, Lame. At all. Carbs are the enemy. Carbs are the enemy. Carbs are the enemy. Mm. If anybody wants to lose weight, go, go a month without eating starchy carbs, bread, pasta, even potatoes and that kind of stuff. Just go off of it and see what happens. 100% off of it. 100% off of it. You don't, you don't need it. The, the food pyramid, which said what? 10, 11 servings of carbohydrates. Yeah, was that was created. the base. That was the base of the pyramid. Yes, it was created. You follow that thing too in elementary school. You're like, this yes. is. It was created. Yeah, all the elementary school children following the food guide pyramid. Much more. It was yeah. made by a guy out of Minnesota who had ties to the, to the wheat industry. So it was just, we were sold a, a huge lie. That protein way up at the top to whatever, up the yeah, top two. Second tier. Should be at the very bottom. All right, so we did a video about this a few weeks ago. I mean, this is basically the same argument Jordan Peterson makes. So I'm going to give you the TLDR. People didn't actually follow the food guide pyramid. Yes, they increased their starchy carbohydrate consumption. Contraindicated. Bad idea. But they did not increase their consumption of fruits and vegetables. Well, increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables in your diet is also contraindicated and a bad idea. They did not decrease their consumption of sugar. They well... All carbohydrates break down to the same thing pretty much in the bloodstream, don't they? And are the same thing metabolically. They're all identical, except for fructose, aren't they? It's all glucose. It's all sugar, lame. Okay? It did not decrease their consumption of added oils. In fact, they added more. Well, that's a bad idea as well. You should never, ever consume industrialized seed oils, ever, under any circumstances. And they did not decrease their consumption of calories. They calories, lame, are the measurement of the change in temperature of a water bath around a bomb calorimeter once a sample of food has been rapidly combusted in that bomb calorimeter using a large electrical current. That's all they are. There's nothing else that a calorie is. It's not equivalent to anything in terms of does it have a utility in terms of the real and effective actual energy derivable from foods by the human metabolic system? No. Does it have anything to do with energy expenditure by the human body? No. Does the first law of thermodynamics apply in the situation of an open thermodynamic system such as the human body? No. We're done with calories. Anyone who says calories this or calories that and refers those to the human metabolic system is pointing directly and squarely to their incompetence and their complete lack of understanding of physics. Sorry about that, Lame. But let's get on to your exercise physiology ideas, which are just as 
erroneous, false, arrogant, imbecilic. They added more. So this idea that we followed the food guide pyramid, that's like me going to my professor and being like, I don't know why I got an F. Well, I'll tell you why you got an F, lame. It's because you don't understand first principles of physics or thermodynamics or energetics of human function, metabolic function, or exercise physiology. Let's have a look at an example, just one good example that we get a lot of mileage out of here. This is Lame Norton attempting to explain the first law of thermodynamics and getting it completely, utterly wrong. Off you go, Lame. Because here's the thing. There's this thing called the first law of thermodynamics. Yes. The first law of thermodynamics, which does not apply to open thermodynamic systems. But we'll get to that in a minute, because let's let him say this, because it's so funny. Which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred in form. Okay, Lane, 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 Lane. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything remotely similar to, to that. <laughs> oh, my word. Lane. Matter is not conserved. Okay? If you doubt me on that, just go and interview uh, anybody who may be alive still who was in Hiroshima, Japan on the morning of the 6th of August 1945 and ask them whether or not lane <laughs> mass is conserved. Right, good. Okay, let's let's now hear from Mr. Science Ninja Lame Norton some more, shall we? I did everything you asked me. And he was like, you only showed up for one test out of five and you got an A on that one, but the others you didn't show up. You actually didn't do it. Yeah, this idea we followed the food guide pyramid. Yeah, yeah, you say you've said, you've provided no evidence for your claims whatsoever, Lame Norton. You're just saying words and repeating yourself. Complete hogwash. Now, Michael Chandler- We'll prove that. Also says you don't need carbohydrates. Correct. You do not need any exogenous carbohydrates in your diet, not one gram, ever. That is a fact. You don't need carbohydrates. Your body can make up to about 120 grams of glucose per day. Plus or minus is quite individual and it's also quite uh, situational, training status dependent, uh, environmentally dependent. There is some genetic predisposition in the first instance, of course, as well. So the number that Lame's just given there is very, very approximate, in fact. With absolutely no carbohydrate consumption because you have a process called gluconeogenesis where the liver can convert non-carbohydrate substrates to glucose. That's enough to support your red blood cells and central nervous system. And in fact, every other system in your body that requires glucose as well, lame. Gluconeogenesis is more than capable of meeting the needs of all tissues throughout the body. Which are obligate glucose users. Obviously, your brain can also function on ketones, which is one of the reasons. Yeah, there's a, there's a relatively small amount of energy that the brain can derive from ketones, yes. So its needs are reduced in that case. Fine. Reasons that the ketogenic diet can work because it provides a non glucose substrate for the brain, which spares glucose for your red blood cells and central nervous system. So you don't. So your brain is not part of your central nervous system then, lame? Okay, that's good characterization. So you don't understand anatomy either. We'll put that on the list of things that Lame Norton does not understand. Carry on, though, son. Doing well, doing well. Need carbs. When did, well, well, who cares about need? You also only need 50 grams of protein a day. So by Mike's logic, you only need 50 grams of protein a day. Therefore, you should only eat 50 grams of protein. Well, that's pretty sound logic because if you consume more protein than is required, Never mind the other potential negative effects of too much protein. Too much amino acid in your body will be stored gluconeogenically, won't it? So that's producing a bunch of sugar that you don't need, which then turns into fat and increases your um, obesogenesis and also your inflammatory, your chronic inflammatory situation. More protein than is required is not a good thing. Nothing wrong with the logic that you should only eat as much protein as you need. Good. You don't need carbs, therefore you should not eat them. Same logic. 
the addition of something that's not required over a certain level, which is toxic over that level, is a problem and should be avoided. In the case of carbohydrates, the required level is not one single gram ever. So anything over and above that will tend towards toxicity. So avoid it. No problem. Like, this is really, really silly, faulty logic. No, it isn't, Lame Norton. I'll tell you what's silly, faulty logic. Silly, faulty logic is claiming that conservation of mass is a thing at all, um, that it's mentioned in the law of thermodynamics. It actually explicitly is not mentioned in that law at all, lame, or that it should be applied to a human body when it shouldn't, lame. That's silly, faulty logic. Okay, calling yourself a science ninja, that's another example of silly, faulty logic from a boy in short pants academically. Okay? Not eating more of something than is required is not silly or faulty. It's perfectly robust. Okay? What's next? And if we look at the human randomized control trial... There aren't any lame. Control is the word that you're using inappropriately there. If you look at the methodologies of all such studies that you are claiming to be randomized control trials, you will see that they fall down, both on randomization, actually, in the first instance, and also on control throughout the protocols involved. See, an actual scientist, an actual ninja of science, can pick these things out within seconds, lame Norton. Okay, so no, there are no human randomized control trials in existence anywhere in the literature. False again, son. Sorry about that. Or they equate calories and protein because... They don't, in fact. Again, have a look at the methodologies used by such studies and you will see they, in fact, fail to equate calories. Okay? It's important to equate protein. And look at the amount of weight loss and fat loss. What they see is absolutely no difference. No, no statistical difference is detectable over a very, very short period of time when people are provided an insufficient amount of mass made up in various different ways. Because, of course, you need to understand, Lane, which you currently clearly don't, that the body composition and the overall body mass of a human person is largely a mass balance exercise, not an energy balance exercise. The best predictor is mass balance and not energy balance, in fact, and any attempt to convert the masses consumed into energetic equivalents in some means doesn't actually increase the accuracy of prediction or of measurement. It erodes it fatally. It undercuts it completely. In fact, it's pseudoscientific. It's anti-scientific. It's unnecessary. It's silly. It's silly, faulty logic. Lame. Okay? Mass balance is what determines body weight and body composition. Okay? Not energy balance. Right. What's next? Between low-carb diets and low-fat diets. What that says is you can do whatever you want. Now, no, it doesn't say that at all, Lame. It says when you provide someone with an insufficiency of mass to maintain the various components of the mass of their body, their body will lose an amount of mass commensurate. Okay? That's a quite different statement from what you said. You just said that you can do whatever you like, which is not what you can do at all. Actually, in any aspect of life. Sorry about that. If you stop eating carbs for a month, like he says, will you lose weight? Probably. Um, as long as you're not just dousing everything with oil and, you know, putting butter in your coffee like Dave Asprey says. Yeah, you'll probably lose some weight. A lot of it will be water because you can lose around two to three kilograms of just body water on a ketogenic diet. And then you probably will lose some body fat. Over a short period of time in the first two or three weeks. Yeah, sure. As well. So, yes, you can lose weight that way. You can also lose weight on a non-ketogenic diet. Sure. If you provide your body with an insufficiency of mass to maintain the mass balances. Like, I don't understand how this works because it's like he's implying you can't lose weight eating carbohydrates. And, and by weight, I'm reading lame to mean weight that is not water which is an assumption we have to make we have to assume that lame understands that water makes up most of the body mass of a human being the vast majority of it actually and that there is no caloric content to speak of in that water so he has to understand that water needs to be partitioned out of this, but his statements about weight, 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 weight 
fail to do so completely because weight is the entire amount of weight, including water. And without a clear caveat to the contrary, we just have to assume that Lame understands that, which might be, I don't know, an inappropriate assumption because one would have assumed that a person who purports to hold a PhD in nutritional science would also understand first principles of physics, the laws of thermodynamics, energetics of human metabolism, and possibly have some idea about exercise physiology, which we're about to find out that he doesn't have either. Incredible. How many millions of examples do we need of people who are lean who also eat a lot of carbohydrates? People in his own sport who are lean, who eat a lot of carbohydrates. I would really be interested to see his pre-fight nutrition because I'm pretty sure he is eating. Yeah. A person who, in effect, in practice, is able to keep the mass balances in and out of their body over time through experience, plus or minus a small amount on a daily basis, will, of course, maintain stability of their overall body mass and indeed of the different components of that body mass, fat, skeletal, muscle, organs, viscera, you know, all of that, as well. There's, there's no rocket science in that. There's no surprise in that. However, if chronically you consume more mass than is required, then depending on the makeup of that mass and your hormonal endocrine responses to that, particular makeup of excess mass coming in, that will have an effect over time on various individual components of one's body mass across time, and as a function of that, the total body mass as well, most likely, depending on whether you have a straight swap, a wholesale swap of one form of mass for another, in which case you might achieve worthwhile or indeed deleterious changes in body composition without actually changing your mass one iota. Okay? That's for another day, though. Um, tell us all about exercise physiology, though, Lane. We've been waiting for this. Eating some carbohydrate, and if he's not, it might explain why he tends to gas out in his fights. Wrong. False. Gassing out in any physically demanding situation is not a function of eating insufficient carbohydrates, lame, because the required intake of carbohydrates for human beings, all human beings, including athletes, is not one single gram ever exogenously in the diet. The human body is capable of producing all the glucose required for all purposes, depending on the genes and the environment in which those genes are placed and the training status of the person involved. These things are all trainable and all plastic. The body can do this and does do this. Okay? What is next? Because you cannot power anaerobic exercise. Okay, there is no such thing, Lame Norton, as anaerobic exercise. Once again, Lame Norton showing his destitution of competence to speak on a given topic, destitution of understanding of that topic, Anaerobic exercise, he says. It does not exist, Lame Norton. Okay? So, you're working off a fundamentally flawed, false, and inappropriate model of exercise physiology there. As it turns out, all muscular contraction of all muscle types at all times in all human beings is absolutely dependent upon among other things, glycogen, glycogenolysis, actually. Glucose starch used by muscles to, to, to fuel the sliding filaments, the actin and myosin filaments sliding across each other. Glycogen is the fuel for that. It's the only fuel for that. There are no options. No muscle will contract without glycogen. Ergo, any given muscle fiber will store a resting glycogen level, which is at the right balance for the training status of that muscle fiber and its chronic usage. Okay? What's next? Eyes 
just through dietary fat alone. You can't fire or, or fuel any muscle contraction at all with fat alone. All muscle fibers require glycogenolysis in order to function. Lame Norton. Goodness gracious me, the arrogance in Dunning-Kruger of this boy is never ending. No idea about exercise physiology either. Good. Because anaerobic exercise does not exist, lame Norton. Has to run off glycolysis. All muscle contractions at all levels of intensity whatsoever at all times require glycogenolysis, lame Norton. All of them. There is no option. Because you're not getting enough oxygen for the mitochondria to run the Krebs cycle, and so you're not producing enough ATP from the Krebs cycle, and therefore you have to use glycolysis. Okay, you have to use glycolysis to fire muscle contractions, lame Norton. Because of the step change in ATP requirement on a millisecond scale, 10 to 40 milliseconds depending on the muscle fiber type, of orders of magnitude more ATP draw, you need a method by which you can increase the ATP production incredibly rapidly over the millisecond time scale. And as it turns out, glycogenolysis is the answer. That's the one that the body has evolved and put in place to do so. The much more steady state of oxidative production of energy by the mitochondria rolls along at a rate such that the area under the energy curve produced by mitochondria in a muscle fiber is the same as the area if you integrate under the area of ATP draw at the muscle contractile elements, lame. Okay? The reason that mitochondria don't speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down on the millisecond time scale is because of the massive inertia in the oxidative system. Ergo, you have a system that rolls along at a much more steady rate. It takes up to 180 seconds to reach a new steady state rate. Where, whereas muscle glycogenolysis can produce vast amounts of ATP on the millisecond time scale. Furthermore, you need a third means of energy spatial temporal translation to communicate between the oxidative production of ATP and the glycolytic usage of ATP at muscle fibers, and that's called the PCR system. They are three gears in a gearbox lane. They are not individual energy systems that you have a choice over which one you're going to use. No muscle fiber will contract more than about once, actually, without all three systems functioning. And there is no such thing as anaerobic exercise, all right? So that's why you get an F, Lame Norton. You get an F because you open your ignorant mouth about things that you actually know nothing about. Exercise physiology, first principles of physics, the laws of conservation, the laws of thermodynamics, energetics of muscle function, those kind of things, Lame. These are things that you are ignorant about. You know nothing about these things whatsoever. And every time you open your stupid mouth, you confirm that still further. Carry on though, son, you're doing a great job. Produce ATP. In a fight, it is very much a, you know, kind of a jog and then sprint. Jog and then sprint. Yes, there are, are times when you're just moving around where you are using aerobic exercise. All exercise is aerobic, lame Norton, all of it. Remove oxygen, the person will exercise to the point where they will have one twitch of any given muscle fiber, then that muscle will undergo irreversible tetanus and the person will die. There is no anaerobic exercise, there is no anaerobic exercise capacity, there is no ability to switch between energy systems, all three are required to function in balance in order to produce the energy. The area under the curves is the same in any given muscle fiber for all of them. We are done with that. You don't understand exercise physiology either, lame Norton. Okay, fine. But there are also brief periods of anaerobic bursts. No, there are not. False. Anaerobic exercise still does not exist, lame Norton. What's next? You need to have sufficient glucose in order to power that. 
And they have shown in research studies that you do not perform as well during high intensity exercise, usually above 70% of your VO2 max. If you are not properly fat adapted, because you have changed the diets of your research participants suddenly overnight, relatively recently, and not allowed them a full metabolic transition, lame. See, again, a science ninja would have picked that up. You missed it. Whoops. It's on a low carbohydrate diet. Again, I was short term without a proper transition having occurred. Yes, correct. Respect Michael Chandler, phenomenal competitor. Love to watch him fight, but in this particular fight, I'm the undefeated heavyweight champ. No, you're not. You're still a boy in short pants. And you're also still a coward because you still won't front me for a discussion even about first principles of physics, the laws of thermodynamics, the laws of conservation even, let alone anything else, lame Norton. Plus, instead of actually meeting me face on for a debate where I will absolutely eviscerate you because I am the ninja and you are a schoolboy, instead you try to undercut my credibility by making ridiculous and false statements about my background. Hmm. I think we can see who's the one in short pants here. I think we can see who it is that's the coward. I think we can see who it is that's competent to speak in these areas, and which one of us is not lame Norton. Anyone that watches this video will be able to see this. Anyone with more than three brain cells, anyway. Right, um, sum up. It looks like you're going to sum up, so do that. And he's the like local guy at a circuit who's been knocked out three times. Anyways, if you guys like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, why would we do that, lame Norton? Why would we want to subscribe to a bloke who does not understand first principles of physics? of laws of conservation, of the laws of thermodynamics and how they may or may not apply to a human system, biological energetics at the cellular level, or indeed the nutritional requirements for human beings for both athletes and non-athletes. You don't understand any of those things, Lame. Patently, clearly, absolutely, as I've shown in multiple videos over the last few months regarding your good self, sir. Some. Okay? Coward. know what to do with your nutrition low carb low fat whatever make sure you download carbon diet coach yeah don't do that why would you take advice from this boy on any aspect of human health or physiology or fitness or anything why would you do that our app that we help build we don't pigeonhole you into any one style of dieting if you want to do low carb you can do low carb if you want to do low fat you can do low fat if you want to do plant-based you can do plant-based you want to do time-restricted eating you can do time-restricted eating you want to do reduced carb? You can. You want to do ketogenic? You can. You want to do a balanced diet? You can do that. And that's a bad idea too. He clearly also doesn't understand the Randall cycle. We don't pigeonhole you into any one style of dieting. You said that, Lame, already. You get to pick what's going to be most sustainable for you, and then we take all the guesswork out of it. <laughs> do you? Although you're still talking in terms of calories, which is guesswork, in terms of actual effective energy, and you don't understand the physiology by which the human system runs anyway, so that renders you incapable of actually giving sound advice to people. Good work, Lame. Uh, I think we're done with Lame Norton for today. Uh, join me next time when someone will be wrong on interwebs, and it'll probably be Lame Norton again. Two, three, four.